Hello guys, so welcome again to another uh, assembly language lecture. In this lecture, we're gonna cover three topics. The first one is about what's called uh, load effective addressing instructions, which are instructions similar to the offset, you know, keyword or the offset directive that we studied before. And then the second topic will be about, you know, the control uh, transfer instructions in which you, you, you transfer the control of the program from a location to another location. And finally, we're gonna, you know, end this lecture by talking about, you know, arithmetic operations like add and subtract. So let's talk first about uh, load effective addressing, load effective address. So load effective address, LEA, is, uh, you know, uh, an instruction that moves into a register, you know, the, uh, a particular address in the data segment, okay? So let's remember together this one here. Move the I offset data to. So this instruction here, we started this instruction before or this keyword or this directive offset. And we said that data two is a variable in the memory or the memory segment or data segment, okay? And it has some address. So if we need to load this address into some register so we can use the data inside this memory location, we use, you know, the keyword offset, okay? There is another way to do that using LEA, load, load effective address. So, you know, here in the same example, you have another example in which we don't use offset. We use, you know, the equivalent instruction, which is LEA. So LEA SI data one will do exactly the same as move SI offset, you know, data one, exactly the same. Okay, so in here, data one, is actually, you know, a, a variable, another variable in the data segment, which is that one here, okay? And it has, you know, some address. This address will be loaded into SI register, okay? So now if they are both the same, what is the difference between using, what is the difference between one, let's say, and two, okay? When I should use LAA and when, when I should use uh, move, move register offset then the, date, the variable name. So basically they are functionally, you know, from the function point of view, they are both the same, but load effective address, uh, you know, uh, can be used in much more situations than move the I offset data to. The, the details are in the box, in, or in our text book, okay? So that's the main difference or the advantage of LEAA over, you know, using the directive uh, offset. But, you know, from the speed point of view, uh, move the I offset data two or move the I offset data one, for example, or move SI offset data one, you know, is much faster. You know, it's uh, it takes only one cycle to be executed, but load effective address SI data one takes two cycles, okay? So from the function point of view, they are both the same. Uh, LEA and it's, you know, it's equivalent because there are more than in LEA instructions that can do the same job, uh, you know, uh, can be used in many situations that move the I offset data too can be, can to be used, but LEA in instruction is, is slower than in execution than move, uh, you know, uh, register offset, you know, then the variable name. Okay, guys, here is, you know, the other, you know, uh, load effective addresses, you know, uh, instructions that that are supported by Intel architectures. So we have LEA, we talked about LEA, okay? Uh, there is also LDS, load data segment and LES, okay? And load LDS and load LES, you know, loaded 16 bit register, okay? With the offset address retrieved from the memory location and load DS or ES registers or the segment address. Okay, so the load, you know, I'm sorry, the offset will go to AX, for example, here, you know, 
or whatever the registers that you are using, like DI here, okay, or EX or EDI, with the offset uh, address and load DS and DS, DS and DS, with the you know data segment address itself, okay. In uh, newer architectures than x86, like for example, 8386 and, and forward until Pentium, uh, Intel uh, processors, uh, we, there is also load FS, load GS and load SS, okay? So uh, these new instructions are added to LDA, LDS and LES. And they are they perform with the same stuff, but for longer addresses, like an address that takes four bytes, for example. So for example, here, load uh, DS, BX, and DI. Here, what's gonna happen is that the address in that memory location, okay, uh, as a four byte will be loaded into BX uh, and DS registers. So BX will take the offset address and DS will take, you know, the segment address, the data segment address itself. Okay, guys, that's basically the first topic of this lecture. The second topic now is the control transfer instructions. Okay. Uh, we have, you know, uh, see, or we have seen these instructions before, like for example, jump not zero. So jump not zero, as we see in lab three, you, uh, transfer the control of the, you know, uh, of the execution to, uh, you know, uh, to some label in the, or to some line in the code, okay? So this kind of jumping is called tr control transfer. So usually the program, is, if you have program like this, multiple lines, usually the program executes in that, you know, sequentially in that order. But if you have like, for example, jump node zero here, okay? then you might, you know, change the execution instead of from here to here, you know, you go back, for example, to that line and re uh, or repeat execution of some lines in the code. That's control transfer instructions, okay? And in here, the example for this instruction is jump not zero. We have two kinds of jumps. We have a far jump and we have a near jump, okay? So if you know the transfer is to a memory location within the current code segment, it's a near jump. So you know, guys, we have in our memory multiple segments. One of them is the code segment in which we store you know, the code that we are executing right now. If the transfer is inside the code segment, this is called a near jump. So if, for example, we are here, and we go to that, you know, uh, location, for example, you know, uh, since you are within the code segment, it's a near jump. And it's called, sometimes it's intra-segment, intra-segment, or within the segment, okay? But if, you know, you transfer the uh, control to, out, to some segment outside the current code segment, like, for example, you have another segment here, that you store some of your code. And from that location, we go to some line here. Then this is enter segment transfer. And this is called far transfer, okay? Or far jump. So what's happening, you know, in far jump and near jump? So since if we go back to that example here, Okay, we said that the code were, were executing in that order until you reach some line here, then you go back, you know, to some, uh, you know, early instruction, then you could, you perform that execution again. Okay, until some, you know, condition here is not satisfied, then you continue serially or sequentially as you were in the beginning. So, uh, we need somehow to store, you know, the last, you know, uh, you know, uh, instruction pointer value. And we see that the instruction pointer points at the next instruction to be executed.
So we need all, all the time to know where we, you know, where we, uh, the, uh, the code stopped and the transfer to another, you know, uh, instruction pointer value. So in the near jump, since we are transferring within the code segment, so, so if the transfer, for example, from here to here within the code segment, we need only to store the IB of you know the uh, the new the, the old location. Okay. So, but if you know the control is will be transferred to another segment, then in that time you're gonna change both IB and the code segment. So we have the CS register and the IB register in the near jump. Only the IB will change it because uh, it's the same code segment. So the same start and this, the start is in, in the code segment register. But if you're gonna move to another segment, then both CS and IB will be changed. The first you know, uh, kind of jump uh, in which you can jump is called the conditional jump. And these are the, you know, the type of jumps that we did in our examples before, like jump root zero. So there is a condition here that if the previous operation doesn't change uh, or doesn't, you know, result in a zero, then jump. Otherwise, don't jump. Okay. So here, you know, in the conditional jump, control is transferred to a new location if certain condition is met like the example that we mentioned. In that here, for example, jump not zero hello, go to hello label, go, go to the line with a label hello. If, you know, uh, you know, if there is no zero happens before, okay? If the zero flag is zero. But if the zero flag is one, which means there is a zero, it's not, not zero, then you will not jump. And there are many other conditions, many other conditions. Like for example here, uh, jump above, which is equal also to jump not below. Okay, so in here you have two conditions that must be met, must be uh, met in order to you know make the jump. Both the carry flag equal to zero and the zero flag equal to zero. Both at the same time should be zero, so you can make the jump. Another example, jump above or equal, or jump not below, in which you test only the carry flag. If the carry flag is zero, you jump. If the carry flag is not zero, equal to one, you are not jumping. Uh, here, for example, jump carry. So here you're gonna make the jump if the carry is equal to one. Jump zero or jump equal to zero. Uh, here you're gonna jump if, if the zero flag is equal to jump, equal to, I'm sorry, to, to one, and so on, guys. So you have here, you know, all the instructions that you can use. And if you see two instructions in the same, share the same cell, that means they are equal. Like for example here, uh, jump greater is equal to jump not, you know, uh, not less nor below, or not nor, nor equal, okay? So you can use this or this one. And here are all the conditions. So forget about the naming, forget about if this naming, okay? Just look at the condition. So you might, you might be asked in, in an exam or assignment, okay? If you want to jump under certain condition, which, you know, an instruction we can use. So you, put, you, you look here for, in this table for the condition, you compare it to the condition inside the question, then you choose the proper, you know, uh, uh, mnemonic here or instruction. So we see the conditional jump, then there is, you know, what's called short jumps. The short jump here is actually, you know, targets uh, instruction within, 
you know, minus 128 to 127 byte of the current IP. So for example, because this may, might be confusing a little bit. So if we are, if this is a quote segment, for example, okay. And, you know, here is the current value of IP or the current, you know, instruction to be executed. If you jump within forward, I mean, within one, two, seven, or backward within one, minus one, 28 instructions. This is called uh, short jump, short jump, okay? So for example, if IB is equal here, for example, equal to one, then you jump to instruction here uh, at, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, 100 further. So IB will be 101, this is a short jump. If you go backward with, with minus, for example, you know, like for example, IB equal to zero, then this is a backward jump. But since you are within that range, then it's a called short jump. All conditional jumps that we see, like for example, jump node zero, jump carry GC or whatever, you know, all these, you know, uh, kind of jumping here instructions are short jumps, okay? So this, this short, these conditional jumps, you know, are two byte instructions. One byte is for the jumping condition. I mean, one byte to, to store, you know, GA or GNB or GNZ, you know, whatever, or jump Z, okay? And the other byte is for the step or the offset. How much you're gonna increase, you know, IB. So after executing, the instruction IB will be equal to the old IB plus or minus, you know, some offset. This offset might be within, you know, uh, minus 128 and 127. Okay. Or an hexadecimal from 00, zero to FF. And this will give us, you know, 256 possible addresses. In the backward jump, okay, we are not adding or not subtracting actually. In all cases, we are adding. So in the backward jump, the offset here will be the tooth complement. So if we're gonna make a negative offset, we actually make an positive and here we take the second or the tooth complement or the second complement of the offset. Okay. So the first, uh, we see that the first kind of jump is a uh, uh, conditional jump. Now the unconditional jump. So there is another, you know, way to make the jumping, but now it's unconditionally. There is no condition to make the jump. And for that, we use what's called the GMB, jump. So it's all the time jump. There is no condition to be tested to make the jump. So it's like go to. So there are some languages, programming languages, uh, you know, uh, that use what's called the go to instruction, which go to some certain location or some certain line or some certain label unconditionally without any condition. This is like jump instruction in assembly. Uh, there are three kinds of this unconditional jump. The first one is, is called the short jump. Second one is called the near jump. And the third one is called far jump. Looks like short jump and near jump are, you know, uh, close in meaning, and that's right. The difference, the only difference between short jump and near jump is the kind of offset. In the short jump, as we mentioned, the jump is within, you know, this range, minus 128 uh, to 127. So in the near jump, however, we are still in the same current code segment, but the jump is much bigger than, you know, that range. So in both one and two, we are jumping in the same code segment. So this is the code segment, okay? But in the first one, 
in the short jump, the jump is within, you know, minus 128 to 127. In the near jump, we are you know, uh, inside is a quote segment, but can jump to anywhere in the quote segment. Remember the quote segment is 64K. 64K is much bigger than minus 128, 127. So the jump here will be between minus 32,768 and 32,767. Much bigger than minus 128 and, and 127. But still both are in the same quote segment. We can do the near jump in three ways, okay? The first one is called direct jump, like writing jump, then for example here, you know, 200. This means, you know, add 200 to the, to the IB. Of course, 200 is, is bigger than 127. That's why it's a near jump. But it's less than 32,767. So it's a near jump. We are still in the good segment, okay? The second one is called uh, register and direct jump, in which instead of writing, you know, uh, a number like this, you write uh, a register. So jump BX means uh, have take the value inside the BX and store it in IB. BX, remember, guys, is 16 bits, and 16 bits, you know, uh, is much bigger than you know, 16 bit can take any range in 32,000. The last kind is memory in direct jump. It is exactly like this one. It, also, we are going to the memory and in the memory location, 16 bit memory location and take what's inside this memory location and, and offset it with, with the IB. So for example, if we say jump BDI, so this means go to the, you know, some location in the memory. This location has address DI, okay. Uh, this is 8 bits, so we're going to take this guy and the following guy. So these together is 16 bits and add them to IB. Or I'm sorry, IB will take these two values, okay, to replace what's, what's, what's in IB. The third type of unconditional jump is the far jump. And this is the format for it, jump far pointer label. So jump is the name of the instruction. Far pointer is a directive. So it's, a, it's, like, a, it's like a keyword, it can't change. The label can change. The label can be hello, for example, whatever you like. And here we are jumping outside the current put segment. We are going out. So for example, here, we we'll go to somewhere outside, either here or here. Might be in, a, in a, some segment, you know, higher than the good segment or lower than the good segment. And in that case, both IB and CS will be replaced by new values of the new segment that you go to. Finally, the call statement. The call statement is, you know, uh, is a keyword, a mnemonic, okay, is that you use to call a procedure or a function. Like for example, if you want to do sign, you know, sign sun, some theta, for example, okay, or sign phi, whatever. So if you do, and you're gonna use this function uh, many times. So you bought a code for this sign, for example, in assembly somewhere, and then you call it uh, in in the code in the main code itself. But you know. Historically, we called this procedure. We don't call it as a function. In newer programming language, they, they call it, you know, function. But it's it's exactly the function. Same, you know, same uh, same spirit here. Uh, the call statement also might have near or far, you know, uh, calling. I mean. This function or this procedure might be inside the current segment, or the current code segment, and in that case, it will be a near call, okay? Or might be outside the current code segment, and in that case, it will be a far call. In that case here, 
the microprocessor need to uh, store the value of the IP and the code segment register so that when it finishes the procedure, it goes back to the next line after the call, okay? If it is a near call within the same code segment, then only IP will be saved in the stack. It will be saved in the stack, by the way, okay? If it's a far call, both CS, the code segment register and IB will be saved. So let's take an example here. So you have here the code segment. So here your code, here is your code, for example, three lines, and here is your you know procedure. And you know, this line is the second line here, is the line in which you have the code. Call hello, for example. And here is the procedure. And the first line here, for example, is hello, move X and one, whatever, you know. So we need after executing these three instructions to go back and execute that third line. This is the code segment. So we are, uh, the procedure is, is, is a near, this is a near call, okay, or a near transfer. So in that case, uh, when we do or execute the call hello, you know, the IB will be saved in the stack. So this is will be the IB, for example. So, okay. What is this IB? The IB is the address of this third line. here. So uh, when we execute the third line in this procedure, this, this line here, uh, the processor will, will bob or read, you know, uh, the IB so that, you know, the IB will be pointing to the third line here. And we continue execution, the third and maybe the fourth and so on. That's why, you know, any procedure or any, any subroutine, so it, called, it can be called the procedure or subroutine or a function. All the time, the last word or keyword or, ne or mnemonic in that procedure, the third line in that case, should be returned. RET, R-E-T. That means, hey, processor, uh, the procedure has been finished, the subroutine has been finish finished, the function has been finished. Please return or pop back the IB uh, to execute the line after the call. So which is which is which is a third line in that case. Finally, uh, for all this jumping, we need you know a label. To jump to any location, we need a label. So there are some rules to make you know the names for the label. Okay. First of all, it might be alpha alpha alphabetic letters. Okay, it can be both upper or lower case. Uh, it can contain digits from zero to nine. It can contain, you know, one of these four uh, or five. Question mark, period, add, underline, and dollar sign. The name itself must not exceed 31 character and must be unique. You cannot have two lines in the same code with the same name, okay? And the first character must be alphabetic or special character. It cannot be a digit. Okay, guys, that was it for the jumping instructions. That was it for, you know, uh, uh, load effective address topics. And in the next lecture, we're gonna cover, you know, the arithmetic operations, basically the add and subtraction, you know, instruction. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video, bye-bye.